So let's sharpen uh, an ads. Uh, I use uh, short handled ads. I keep it protected with a rubber band and a fancy piece of cardboard. Uh, there's long handled ads and I don't use them. I don't. Uh, they're good. Uh, people use them. You know, I've seen them do a great job with them. I just don't don't use one. Don't know much about. Them. Uh, this short handled ads is, uh, I guess you would call it an out channel where the bevel is on on the outside. And there's some ads, and certainly some of the long handled ads, where the bevel is on is on the inside. And on those ads, I've uh, I've seen where they can knock the head off. Uh, to enable them to, to, to grind it. But since I don't use one, don't have one, I can't show you how to grind one of those. I, it'd be ridiculous for me to show you anyway, I don't know. So anyway, uh, show you how I sharpen, sharpen this. And, you know, I struggled with sharpening this tool for, for, for years and years. And then finally I developed this kind of down and dirty method. And you all might have more pride than me and not sharpen it like that, but, uh, but uh, it gets it sharp and uh, uh, gives me some good results. So, so that's what I'm going to show you. This tool right here is uh, uh, Drew Langsner helped design it. He sells it up at Country Workshops in North Carolina. It's made by Hans Carlson and uh, uh, it's one that I like a lot. There's other ones out there that I think are, are, are real good too, but this is the one that I have and, uh, and uh, it, it works great. Okay, well let's go over to the grinder. So uh, I keep this bevel uh, slightly convex, uh, enables me to come out of the cut. But if you roll it too much, then you get it too blunt and it's hard to uh, uh, repeat the sharpening. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is, is grind it. And there's you know, a lot of ways to grind these things. Uh, uh, Tim Manny and Pete Galbert lock it in a in a, uh, or a round piece of wood that they've notched out and uh, put it in the uh, Wolverine jig over here with the extension on it and grind it like that. Uh, I haven't had good luck with that, but they, maybe I need to go take lessons. Uh, <coughs> anyway, this is the way I grind it. So I put a uh, mark it black right up on the edge I need to know when I get to that, when I get to that edge. Uh, so I'm going to start grinding right back in here and slowly come up to the edge to make sure I keep that uh, as flat as possible right here. And I don't know if that's out of my way or not. Yeah, I think it is. That's it. How do I hold this? I haven't shortened this in a while. This is a hundred grit uh, aluminum oxide stone, and it's what they call a friable stone. I think it means it constantly loses grip, uh, which keeps it fresh. It doesn't do it perfect, but as you can see, I've hit a little bit up on my marker, so I've got to watch that. Typically, I wouldn't go all the way to the edge with the grinder. Uh, the only time I might go all the way to the edge with the grinder is if uh, there were nicks in it. Uh, and uh, But I'm going to take it all the way to the edge for demonstration purposes. So 
I'll make sure it's even, make sure I haven't had any yips or anything in it. I see I'm a tad high, just right there. So I'm going to come back and maybe lightly touch that. Okay, that's got it, and uh, so now for the for the next step. Well, I, I barely got to the edge with that grinder, and that's all you want to do, unless you got a big, you know, a big nick or something that you need to get out, and then you got to go past that. But uh, and the way that I tell I'm there is I can drag my finger on the inside there, and I can feel a small little burr that was uh, put on by the. By the grinder <clears throat> okay so next here I kind of break one of my rules you know I I try to use whatever I've got and simple stuff to either make chairs with and to sharpen with I don't like many gizmos and I certainly don't like to go out and buy something that, that they tell you you need uh, but for sharpening my carbon gouges and the ads and some other very hard to sharpen tools so it's very hard to sharpen for me I use this wheel right here, and this is made by Norton, and it's a Beartex wheel. It's B-E-A-R-T-E-X, I think, and I don't know what it is. I think it's aluminum oxide impregnated into plastic, uh, but uh, it's not cheap. It's, you know, fifty, sixty dollars, something like that. And there's different grades. This is the fine one. A little bit of rain on the tin roof there. It's a deburring wheel in the in the industry, but uh, the it cut it cuts fast. You can burn with it. I think the biggest danger is you can roll the tool over too much. So you really have to pay attention to just creeping up to the edge with it. And of course, the tool has to be turned down. You know, in like a grinder where you can grind it like that. That that wouldn't be good. Uh, <clears throat> so let me. Uh, put a mark right on the edge and I'm going to start back here and I'm going to creep up and I this grinder is just a cheap uh, grinder I bought at the flea market or bought from my neighbor at a yard sale for five dollars and it's a uh, 3600 rpm grinder so. <laughs> See, I'm barely hitting it right now. So all the marks are gone. Now let's see. I've got a burr on part of it, but not right over here. So there's a burr from this. Okay, I've got a small burr all the way across. So like I said, the biggest danger is dubbing this over, is, is rolling it too far, and uh, it can do it quick. And, uh, so, uh, so I only use this on the tools that I just can't really sharpen any other way or have trouble sharpening or it takes me a really long time. So now we'll go to the uh, buffer. I need to buff off this uh, this burr and you have to watch it with it too because you'll roll it you'll roll it too far uh, so I charge this with uh, this green stuff that I keep in the box over there and so it's turn it on now you can turn back the burr with this stick 
or you can do it the real down and dirty way. And you gotta watch it. You can put it right there and reference it off of this so you don't do it too much. Now I can see that burr on there. so sharp you don't even have to touch your arm you kind of scare the hair off uh, well let's hit this thing one more time and see if I don't know how big that that nick is I don't know if that's got to take that back to the bear text or not <laughs> this on uh, white pine and ingrain white pine and uh, because as I said many times it really takes a sharp tool to cut white pine and to cut ingrain white pine takes the sharpest of, of tools so it's a great test on it so I could whack on it but also I could just do that right there and see that edge that that's given me I mean that is unblemished it's waxy uh, you could just really do some damage with this thing now. <laughs> 